This video highlights some of the new and updated features of Brightspace Learning Environment 10.7.8. Instructors can now load an existing assignment as an assignment post using Activity Feed. When creating an assignment post in Activity Feed, click Select Existing. Then, select an assignment from the Assignment Picker. Instructors can now attach files directly from OneDrive to Message and Assignment Posts and Activity Feed. To use this feature, turn on the D2L, Third Party, OneDrive, Enable OneDrive Picker configuration variable. From a Message or Assignment Post in Activity Feed, click the OneDrive icon. And navigate to and select the file you want to upload and attach. Then, click Select. You can now turn on and off Google Drive and OneDrive attachments in Activity Feed. You can now turn on or off the D12 Third Party Google Drive Enable Google Picker and D12 Third Party OneDrive Enable OneDrive Picker configuration variables to determine whether instructors can attach Google Drive or OneDrive files to message and assignment posts in Activity Feed. Improvements have been made to increase the value of the Brightspace datasets. Differentials are now available for the following datasets Course Copy Logs, Org Units, Org Unit Ancestors, Org Unit Descendants, and Users. The Competency Activity Results dataset now has a new Criterion ID field column. In addition, the datasets previously available in Brightspace Insights are converted to ensure fresher data and reduce reliance on the old warehouse split. All the data now resides in one location. To support the new datasets, there are two new permissions in the Advanced Datasets tool that are automatically changed during the update. Can Execute Final Grades and Can Execute Enrollments and Withdrawals. Instructors can now attach an item directly from OneDrive to an Assignment Submission folder. To enable this feature, you must set the D2L, Third Party, OneDrive, Enable OneDrive Picker configuration variable to ON. When creating or editing an Assignment Submission folder in the Attached Files section, click Add Attachment and select OneDrive. Navigate to and select a file from the OneDrive Picker window. Then click Select. The attachment appears, including the OneDrive logo, to differentiate it from other attachment types. Parents can now view assignment posts in the activity feed. When parents view a learner's portfolio and navigate to the latest posts, they can now view assignment posts. Note, attachments added to assignment posts are not available to parents. However, links to external URLs are. Additionally, parents cannot select the assignment post to view assignment details. Parents can now view grade items released from all courses that the child is enrolled in. Note, this does not include the child's final calculated or final adjusted grade, or feedback left on grade items. When parents view a learner's portfolio, they will now see the recent grades widget. Click View All Grades to view the grades that are associated with an assignment or quiz. Updates have been made to the browsers that are supported by D2L. D2L supports the current major version of iOS and the previous major version of iOS and the latest version of Google Chrome on Android KitKat 4.4 and above. D2L supports the latest versions of Google Chrome, Safari, Opera, and Firefox desktop browsers. D2L no longer supports BlackBerry and Microsoft Surface mobile browsers. For an up-to-date list of all supported browsers, refer to the Brightspace Platform Requirements Guide. Brightspace has developed two new datasets. The Competency Log records changes to the competency structure. The Competency Activity Log records changes as competencies are mapped to specific activities. For more information, refer to the updated Data Hub Administrator Guide. Two improvements have been added to the My Courses widget. First, there is a new widget setting that provides the ability to show or hide the semester on the course tile. To do so, click the context menu for the My Courses widget and select Customize this widget. Select Show Semester. Then, click Save. 
the semester now appears on course tiles. Second, courses can now be filtered by role in View All Courses. Navigate the My Courses widget and click View All Courses. Click the Filter drop down menu and select Roles. Then, select the role you want to filter the courses by. Note, a user only sees the role filters if they have more than one role alias, and a role alias must exist for the role to appear in the filter. Improvements have been made to the user progress and manage exemptions pages. The summary page hides exempted activities for assignments, surveys, quizzes, and checklists. Details pages of assignments, quizzes, discussions, surveys, and checklists now display if an activity is exempt by showing the exempted label beside the name of the activity. A set of statistics, excluding the exempted activities, appear at the top of each respective tool's summary page, and the same statistics appear at the top of each tool's details page. The Manage Exemptions page now displays a loading spinner while data is retrieved. This page now supports search to help instructors find a learner who can then be exempted. And the list of users on this page now only includes those with the Can Be Graded in Grades role setting. Note, when activities are exempted, any associated release conditions must still be met. New action types have been added to the Intelligent Agents tool. This feature implements PyItem D1904. The following improvements have been made to the existing Edit Agent page and the new agent workflow. The description field is minimized by default. Numbers have been added to the sections to help with workflow. The new agent workflow has been changed to initially call out role criteria, then actions, and lastly, scheduling. Note, a schedule is not a necessity for all intelligent agents. An agent can be run as a one-time query or on demand. In the Actions section, the new Change User Enrollments option allows instructors to enroll a user into a course or unenroll a user from the current course. Additionally, UI changes have been made to the Send Email action. You can now turn on the new D2L, Tools, Content, Choose Content Experience configuration variable to allow instructors to choose the content experience used in their course. If the new configuration variable is turned on, instructors can see a pull-down menu in content, allowing them to switch between the classic content experience and the lessons experience. Instructors can now add a description to lessons materials. Now, when instructors add or edit course materials, they can add a description. This allows instructors to provide learners with general information on course materials using the familiar HTML editor. Instructors can now set release conditions on materials and lessons. When an instructor clicks the More Options menu, they can now select View Release Conditions from the drop-down menu. This allows instructors to restrict access to materials based on learner enrollment, completion of an activity, mark received on a quiz, and many other factors. Instructors can now add LTI links directly to their course materials when using lessons. Now, when adding material to a course offering, a new external tool activity tile is visible. Learners and instructors can no longer view numbering and labels for units and lessons when viewing the lessons table of contents. Numbering and labels for units and lessons no longer display when viewing the lessons table of contents.